What do you think will happen to Silverbell? I asked Velvet, as the sky banner pushed his way through the smoke-yellowed sky. I truly don't know, Velvet replied, giving a polite cough. I hope, with her horn reformed, that her magic will swiftly return. But the wasteland has never seemed that forgiving. She coughed again, and I found myself joining her. We were skirting the edge of the forest, heading toward a splendid valley by way of Ponyville. The fires of the Everfree Forest were choking the air in every direction around it. The forest had been burning for a week now. It was consumed in flames and a thick fog of smoke, but from what I could see, it seemed absurdly intact. Damn, you'd think the whole place would be ash by now, Clamity called out, flying low to keep us out of the thicker smoke. Hey, Pyrelat, you sure this ain't a phoenix forest? Pyrelat let out a derisive hoot. Our attention was snatched by the sound of a gunshot. It was rapidly followed by several more. Clamity diverted towards the sound, and soon we came upon a gunfight. Two groups were battling between the cover of rocks and what looked like the charred corpse of a river serpent. Looks like raiders, Clamity called back. Raiders? Seriously? I'd already wiped out all the raiders in Ponyville. What do they do? Respawn? Who are they attacking? I asked, bringing in my EFS and trying to get a fix on both groups through the haze. All the raiders, I think. Clamity blinked, and I got a better look. Sooner, uh, sure enough, three younger raiders seemed to be holding out against four older ones. Neither side had lost a pony yet, but one of the two bucks in the younger group had taken a shot to the leg and was bleeding badly. I was mildly surprised that Calamity hadn't started shooting yet. Shouldn't we help? Velvet Remedy asked, moving to the window next to me. Help who? Calamity questioned. I ain't sure who the good guys are down there, if any pony. And I'm feeling pretty gun shy after recent events. Don't want to start shooting at the wrong folk. <clears throat> Velvet Remedy gave an exaggerated sigh. There are more than one ways to find. Or. There are more ways than that to help. She waved her horn as it began to glow. Below us, Velvet Remedy's shield began to snake between the two groups of fighters. Excuse me, Velvet's magically amplified voice rang out. Could you please lower your weapons for a moment and tell me why you are fighting? What the hell? One of the older raiders responded by tipping over the muzzle of his rifle and taking a shot at Velvet Remedy. The bullet struck the now armored wall of our passenger wagon. Wrong, Velvet informed him. Magic burst from her horn striking him with her anesthetic spell. The raider buck toppled, paralyzed. Let's try again. I floated out my zebra rifle, thinking I really needed a weapon that used more common ammunition and did not set ponies horrifically on fire. And I was holding myself in reserve. Clement and I exchanged glances as we let Velvet Remedy's tactic play out. Do you have a death wish or something? One of the older raiders shouted out. Are you out of your frickin' mind? More shots rang out. Both sides were still trying to shoot each other through Velvet Remedy's shield. Neither was having any luck. The raiders, one of the young bucks shouted up at us. They wiped out the Republic. They wiped out the what now? I was confused. Little town up north of here, Calamity informed us. I protected a few caravans traveling between it and New Appaloosa. It's a bizarre cult-like group of weirdos, but not bad ponies. Certainly didn't deserve to be slaughtered. And who are you? Velvet asked. Whoa! Clemity shouted as one of the larger groups uh, hurled a homemade explosive at the Sky Bandit. I caught it in my telekinesis, pulling Velvet out of the window as the bomb exploded in the air sending shards of glass and nails in every direction. Sulu stepped between Zenith and the window, his armor deflecting the shrapnel that found its way inside. I heard Calamity bite back, cry of pain, as a nail tore through one of his wings. 
His barding and the Sky Bandit protected him from the rest. We're heroes! The younger mare of the group of three yelled up at us as the two bucks next to her reloaded. You look like raiders, Leveroni pointed out cautiously. What? One of the younger bucks cried out in surprise. Oh, the barding? I blinked, feeling my life somehow come full circle. Okay, I called out, moving back to the window and aiming the zebra rifle. One of the raiders shot at us again, missing the entire Sky Bandit. You sure, little Pip? We don't know... We know one side is shooting at us, Steelers pointed out impatiently, opening the door of the passenger wagon as the missile launcher opened on his battle saddle. Fuck! Some pony shouted from below. It's one of those Alcat Rangers. Whoosh! Steelers missile shot out. One hit Velvet Remedy's shield, which collapsed in the fiery blast. The other plowed through the fire and struck the ground at the hooves of the older raiders in an explosion of bloody meat. Two managing to dive to safety, but their fellow raiders were bloody, smoldering giblets. The two survivors turned their attention towards us fully, one of them pulling another homemade grenade. I prepared to grab up my magic. Let me give you a taste of what I have to offer. I suddenly understood. The spell was so simple, it was barely more than telekinesis. The easiest thing, really. My horn began to glow. The splattered blood from the torn raider chunks began to flow together, pooling, lifting. I realized this was the first spell. The little tester offered to any pony who might be... be what? Fitting? Worthy? Weak enough? Now, just form the blade. Be unwavering. No! I shouted. My scream simultaneous with the raider's throw. The blood splashed back to the ground, seeping into the soil. Velvetorni threw another shield up, this time between us and the raiders, deflecting the bomb. It exploded, sending its shrapnel into the shield. No. I was shaking. Cold sweat had broken out over me, but I had refused. I would rather be a one-trick pony than have a spell like that. I've never seen the zebra before. The olive buck walked around Zenith as she watched him apprehensively. I mean, not a real one. You don't look like the ones in the pictures. He tilted his head, brushing a wisp of eggplant colored mane from his face. Can your eyes really glow? Stilus made, sh made short work of the battle, and we had landed. Vogue Remedy was tending to the wounded buck, and Calamity was talking to the group's mare who had recognized the Pegasus from tales of his caravan protecting. Her eagerness to chat with him about hunting raiders had convinced him that we had aided the correct side. We had yet to trade names. Haven't you heard about the Wasteland heroine? The younger mare in scavenger raider armor said excitedly. She and her friends swoop in and save the day, shooting the bad guys and monsters dead. Pow, pow, pow! The Amber Mare's magenta eyes were wide, and she was nearly squealing. We're going to be just like her! My ears fell back. I cringed with a little... cringed a little inside. Happy I was not wearing my stable barding anymore. Clemdo was looking at me, a hoof to his muzzle, snickering. Damn it, why was he snickering? Are you sure... She'd want you to put yourselves at risk, hunting raiders? Velvet Remedy asked, carefully, as she wrapped the buck's hind leg in healing bandages. I'm sure the Wasteland heroine wouldn't want you getting hurt. The way she massaged the name made me flush with embarrassment. The radio was bad enough. I took a step back, behind steel hooves, my ears burning. Oh no! Her patient insisted. A khaki-coated pony with a vanilla-colored mane said. But she wants us to help make Equestria better. DJ Pwn3 says we all need to learn from her example. She can't be everywhere at once, the olive-coated second buck explained. It's up to the rest of us to be brave and step up, helping fight the good fight. 
This was too much. I never deserved my reputation. But after Arbru, this was unbearable. Why should any pony idolize me? I wanted to bury myself in a hole somewhere until this was over. You are a lifesaver, the khaki-coated buck told Velvet Remedy, and she finished binding his wound. If anything, the equestrian wasteland needs more ponies like you. Velvet Remedy blinked in surprise. Why, thank you, she breathed. Hey, the buck exclaimed, his eyes widening as he stared at Velvet Remedy. You sound kind of like that gal on the radio, the one who sings the new songs. Pyrolite landed on Velvet's tail and sang out a musical note. <clears throat> Velvet Remedy blushed. You have a good ear. At least she was used to having fans. Wow, Olive Buck said, staring at Steel Hooves. Are you really one of those renegade Steel Ranger heroes? Steel Hooves whined. I am. That's so cool! And so you're hunting raiders? Calamity asked, sounding impressed. Yep, we're on a rescue mission, the enthusiastic Amber Mare said. A scowl broke over her face. These raiders murdered every adult in the Republic and took the Phillies and Colts back to their fort. I guess they wanted to keep them for themselves. We're going in after them. Probably wanted playfangs, the khaki buck snorted, his voice filled with loathing. Clemity bristled. Velvet Remedy gasped. They did what? Where's this fort? I asked, stepping forward, my personal embarrassment forgotten. <clears throat> the olive-coated buck pointed out a hoof. There's an old hut on the far side of Ponyville, right up next to the Everfree Forest. Damn it. I thought I'd cleared Ponyville of raiders. This place must have been far enough out that I missed it. They've turned it into some small of some kind of small compound. How many? Steelers asked. About twelve. Minus these four, so eight. But they've got guns. And dogs. Zenith looked to me. No more distractions? She asked calmly. I bit my lower lip. Still who's nade. The rest of you can go ahead if you wish. But Applejack would not want her rangers to ignore a cry for help. The three younger ponies were staring at us. I nodded. The goddess will just have to wait another hour or two. We had a chance to help, and I wasn't going to turn my back. No distractions be damned. Valdemar was trembling. That's... I nodded. I wasn't surprised now that I had missed this raider group. The cottage that they had built their compound around really was a bit removed from the rest of the town. It was surrounded by a large fence of rusted and razor wire, and sharpened poles impaling the heads of rabbits, squirrels, and other small animals. Sickly, poison trees twisted up from the barren ground, providing support for sniper nests. Dead birds hung from their branches, strung together like wind chimes. A small river sloughed through the property, coming out of the Everfree Forest. The water gray with ash. Inside the fence were kennels, some of which were used for angry, malnourished guard dogs that roamed around inside. As for the other kennels, through my binoculars, I could see the mangled bodies of a pony in one of them. Fluttershy's Cottage, Steelhoofs confirmed. The fence on the far side of the cottage lay in broken ruin. Several trees on that side had been uprooted, and a few kennels had been crushed flat. It looks like something huge had lumbered out of the Everfree Forest, barely noticing what it had stepped on. A couple raider ponies were standing over the wreckage, poking at it, while a third was keeping the dogs from escaping with a shield spell much like Velvet's. I passed the binoculars to Calamity. Could you give us a flyover? Make sure there ain't nothing we're missing. The Pegasus took off his hat, threw the binocular straps around his neck, and kicked off his hat, back to his head. Gotcha, little pip. One-year-old recon, coming up. 
The amber mare stared as Calamity stretched out his wings and flew. Pegasuses are so cool. Pegasi. Velvet Remedy com corrected automatically. Yeah, those two. We should split up. Steel is recommended. Hit the main hut and the yard simultaneously. Keep them divided. I agreed. You should go with these ponies and take the ones in the yard. Zenith can free any captives and give them to safety, while you four take out the... Three. Velvet interrupted. You're not sending this buck into battle with a wounded leg. She scowled. Especially when he might have to evade dogs. I frowned and nodded. You're right. I wasn't thinking. The fact that I regularly charged into combat, wounded, didn't mean it was smart. Especially since this little group of wannabe heroes didn't have a velvet remedy of their own. I looked at steel hooves. It looks like this, uh, most of the foals must be inside the cottage. Calamity and I will sneak in and take them out. I looked to velvet. I would like you right behind us, with your shield spell ready. I don't want any of the kids caught in the crossfire. She nodded primly. Wait. The khaki buck said. You're taking her in with you? Are you insane? Velvet Remedy gave him a questioning scowl. I'm not helpless. You're a healer. You should be protected. Kept out of combat. I understood his logic. The loss of Velvet Remedy was a loss. Not just of one pony, but countless. Velvet huffed. Why not put me in a petty little cage, then? Calamity landed right before an argument could break out. Three raiders in the yard, including a unicorn with defensive spells. Two snipers in the nests. Rest her inside. He frowned. I spotted lots of mutilated carcasses, but only two living colts in the cages. I let the dogs nip at them. Others must be inside as well. I looked at Velvet with sudden concern as I remembered the horrors that I had encountered in the Ponyville Library in Carousel Boutique. Velvet, are you sure you don't want to stay close or behind on this one? From what I've seen, these raiders take pleasure in desecrating the former homes of Fluttershy's closest friends. Velvet Remedy walked forward. I'm not staying behind. Let's go. Calamity flew me in through an open window on the second floor of Fluttershy's cottage. As soon as I had my footing, I levitated Velvet Remedy in after us, covering my muzzle, my eyes watering from the stench. The inside of the cottage was beyond foul. The bathroom had been willfully destroyed. The bed still displayed a bit of its butterfly motif in the carving, had been set on fire with a broken lantern, and the burnt remains used as a toilet. Repeatedly. Pictures were knocked from shelves and smashed. Books were defiled. A fireplace was filled with a pile of skulls, some with rotting meat still on the bones. The rotting carcasses of small animals hung from the rafters. Some sort of wicked, bluish ivy had crawled up one wall and entwined with the rafters before dying. I suspected the raiders had poisoned the ground, a part, or uh, killing the plant life, as well as any animal unfortunate enough to try and find food or water here. Velvet Remedy hushed or rushed to the window and threw up. I felt disgusted, not only at what I was seeing and smelling, but because I wasn't at the window doing the same. And Velvet Remedy moved back to the window as she heard voices from downstairs. You want a knife? Little Bucky didn't need a knife. A cruel mare's voice laughed. Oh, give the kid a knife, a buck growled. Makes it more interesting. I slowly crept towards the stairwell, calamity in front of me. Now, remember, kids. A third voice chuckled as I reached the railing and looked below. The room was filled with old, rusted cages. Most were empty, but there were nearly half a dozen foals locked up inside of some of them. They were all staring down at the center of the room, eyes wide with horror. Several were crying. The center of the floor had been torn up. Two fillies and colts, and a colt, were inside the hole. 
a tangled mesh of rusted barbed wire ringing it. One of the fillies was crumbled in the dirt, bleeding from multiple wounds, the flesh torn from her scalp. The colt looked battered and was breathing heavily, keeping weight off one foreleg. Both he and the standing filly were shaking, tears running down their young faces. The raiders were gathering around the crude, homemade version of the pit, smoking, drinking, and lounging on furniture that integrated the bones of ponies. The one that survives get the bodies of their parents back. Blam! How dare you! Velvet Remedy screamed, swerving her combat shotgun towards the second raider as the first fell. The wasteland isn't hard enough, sick enough, without you monsters making it worse. Blam! The second shot tore through the left hind leg and flank of the second raider. He collapsed, screaming, in a pool of blood. And in Fluttershy's house? Velvet Remedy tossed up her shield over the children as she marched down the stairs, her expression full of unbridled fury. I watched, frozen. I'll have your head on a fucking plate, the raider mare screamed as she dove for a riot shotgun. Blam! Our shotgun surgeon splattered open the chest of the wounded raider. How dare you be this foul! Outside we could hear explosions intersected with a regular gunshot. Steelhooves was engaging the enemy. The raider mare swung around, the riot shotgun in her muzzle, and found herself facing down Velvet Remedy's barrel. The raider seemed to freeze, staring back at the black hole of her death. Our unicorn was trembling with rage. I've never killed a pony before, she said, her voice soft, but still amplified by her spell. This is Velvet's Arbru, I thought suddenly. At least she had the benefit that no pony here would question the vileness of the pony she was eradicating. At least she was saving children, not scarring them. Blam! Velvet Remedy lowered the shotgun, turning away from the third raider's ragged, decapitated body. Far as I'm concerned, I still haven't. I didn't want to, the little, little colt, Bucky was bawling. I I didn't mean to mean it. They m made me do it. I I didn't want t t to hurt her. The little filly with a head injury was dead. She had expired before we could get to her. Velvet Remedy hugged the colt, soothing him as best she could, despite looking shell-socked herself. We had saved nine foals in all. There had been three outside, one with a black coat who was curled up so far inside his cage that even Calamity had spotted him. To our surprise, it was a Pegasus, great-grandson of a Dashite named Radar. Calamity had heard of the road Pegasus. Last one to give uh, the Enclave the kiss off, he told me, before my time. I was putting the burden of getting the foals to safety on the three little heroes. The yard of the cottage had a wagon filled with cages, undoubtedly how the raiders had brought the foals here. It would serve as a lightly armored transportation. I had seen that the wounded buck <clears throat> now had the riot shotgun. Once Calamity had worked his repair wizardry on it, the shotgun had become a truly respectable weapon, even better than Velvet's own. They should be able to make them to New Appaloosa as long as they went straight there. New Appaloosa wasn't my favorite place to send refugees, but it was the only place close. Junction R7 was too far, and the only place closer had apparently been the Republic, and they couldn't go back there. I wish we could come with you, I told the Amber Mare, realizing I had never gotten her name. But we really have to be going. She nodded. Thank you. The Wasteland Heroine would be so proud of you. I looked, um, I looked at her, reddening. I, uh, yeah, I hope so. I kicked my hoof in the dirt. Heh. <laughs> Any pony ever tell you you were cute like that? She asked, then gave me a little kiss on the cheek, 
before uh, scampering off to her friends. We were trying to coax the little colts and fillies into the wagon. I blinked, my thoughts blown apart. Within half an hour, the wagon was pulling away, pulled by the two unwounded young heroines. Steelers had ensured that the raiders outside never got to harm them, and they were headed to New Appaloosa with a story of the heroine and awesome might of the Applejack's rangers. I could almost feel the warmth radiating off of steel hooves. He had an Applejack proud, and he knew it. I hoped he was finally beginning to really heal. I turned and looked at Velvet. She was managing to hold it together until the wagon was moving. But as I watched, she began to tremble, then collapsed in sobs. Calamity was there to catch her. Why does it all have to be so horrible? Velvet sobbed. How can these horrible creatures be ponies? I stared at the ground, having wondered the same thing. We fight, and hurt, and bleed to try and make Equestria better, Velvet said, burying her face into Calamity's neck. But you can't stop something until you take away its reason for being that way. I thought of the pink cloud. And, but, there's no reason for raiders, no reason for them to be so, so vile. No reason at all. The sun was setting as Calamity landed the Sky Bandit at the edge of Splendid Valley. All about us were dead ponies and the stern wreckage of a military camp. One of Red Eye's banners, slightly scorched, flapped in the wind. Well, we're fucked, Calamity stated as he detached himself from the Sky Bandit's harness. After the other morning, he had jerry-rigged a quick-release mechanism. He had spent at least a few hours skirting the boundary of the valley, looking for this camp. This was one of those parts of the plan I had told him before extracting my memories. The notes I had left in my pit buck were very vague, clearly written to be reassuring, but not informative. But they did <clears throat> include a mention that we were supposed to stop here just before flying into the valley itself. I wasn't sure exactly why, but I suspected it had to do with whatever I had gone into Red Eye's encampment around Tempony Tower for. Something important enough that I took another party time menthol, so I was really hoping it was damn vital. Or maybe not, seeing as whomever we were supposed to meet here had been dead for days. Little black birds were picking on the carcasses. I felt queasy as one of them pulled an eyeball from the armored corpse of a brown earth stallion. These wounds are from alicorn spells, Steelers noted, moving among the bodies. The goddess's children did this. A total massacre. And not a single alicorn dead. Damn. I'm guessing this means the goddess and Red Eye aren't even pretended to be on the same side anymore. Not necessarily. Still who's offered. This could be a preemptive strike. Or maybe, she just didn't like part of his army sitting this close. The more I saw, the more this struck me as part of the forces that withdrew from Tempony Tower. Either way, I doubt Red Eye has the benefit of instant communication. There's a good chance he don't know this happened. And when he finds out, the goddess could pass this off as an unfortunate attack by something out of Everfree. Is that it, then? Clemente asked me. Plan over? I shook my head. I... I don't know. I was the wrong person to ask. I looked around for Zenith. She had disappeared again. Bella was uh, curled up in the Sky Bandit. Pyrelite was struggling her with a wing. Look. If we're still a go, Clemente told me, I want to leave Velvet back here with steel hooves. She's not in any shape to be doing anything else right now. I agreed. Assuming, of course, that the plan allowed them to remain behind. Damn it. Where did the zebra vanish off to this time? I rotated and jumped back as I found myself muzzle to muzzle with his striped-faced zebra. What we need to do is still here, 
she said cryptically, her exotic voice low and urgent. We best move swiftly. I have seen the goddess's children just beyond the ridge. They are engaged with the Hydra, but the battle is not long last. A Hydra? I suddenly guessed what had stomped its way past the slaver encampment in Fluttershy's cottage. Do what you must do, little Pip. I nodded. Both revealed that things were still on track and stunned by the thought of the Hydra. Part of me really wanted to see that battle, but I knew that I wouldn't. I checked the notes on my pit buck, just to make sure, but I was right. Now it was time for me to put on the blindfold. I peeked. I couldn't help myself. The calamity soared across Splendid Valley, hauling the sky bandit behind him. I heard the roars of the Hydra, and just had to take a look. One peek couldn't hurt, right? The first thing I saw was that I was alone in the sky bandit. That shocked me. I felt certain that at least Zenith would be with me as well. I scrambled to the window, looking out, but there was nothing to see. Splendid Valley stretched out for miles. I could see Maripony on the horizon, and the crater filled with hundreds of hellhound holes. The thunder cracked, and the Hydra roared again, telling me that I was looking at the wrong side of the passenger wagon. What you moving around for so much for? Calamity asked as I shifted to the opposite window. I felt a pang of guilt, but it was swiftly washed away by the spectacle of the battle. One alicorn lay crushed and bloody on the ground. A second was in the mouth of the Hydra's head, furthest to the left. The monster was absolutely huge, and the head was almost able to swallow the alicorn whole. Only her wings protruded from its closed maw, fluttering limply as it chewed the life out of her. Three more alicorns swooped around the Hydra, dodging the remaining heads as they snapped at their prey. One of the Hydra heads sucked in a deep breath and blasted out some sort of gas, enveloping one of the goddess's magically shielded children. The purple alicorn shield seemed to protect her. She tilted up a wing, spinning in place, as the second head's maw opened wide and flooded and folded in her wings. There was a flash of light where the alicorn used to be. The head of the gaping hydra exploded with a wet sound, then crumpled, and blood-soaked form of the purple alicorn falling to the ground. I gasped. The alicorn had sacrificed itself and teleported inside the monster's skull. Quickly, I blindfolded myself again, thankful that my head was too small for such a grotesque tastic. Welcome back, my guests. The chorus of voices drowned out my thoughts. My children will guide you. That way, or that you may bask in the presence of the great and powerful goddess. My head began to throb. I felt the sky man had touched down. I waited. According to my notes, Clement would tell me when I could take the blindfold off. I heard him releasing himself from the harness. I listened as his hoof steps drew near. He stopped just outside the door, and we waited. Why do you loiter? Don't you know? I thought at her. Okay, Lil Pip, Calamity said. I lifted the blindfold. There were two dark green alicorns standing on the path ahead. I could see dozens gathered around the Maripony ruins, just standing there, staring at us, mindlessly. No. One-mindedly. I shuddered. I'm not going to be here when y'all are finished, Clement told me. His extreme dislike of his plan clear with every word. His eyes opened wide. Or my eyes opened wide. I knew I was going in alone, but I hadn't realized my ride was leaving for me as well. What the hell? How was I supposed to... When Pegasus' frown pointed towards a section of the rubble, that's your ride out. I followed his hoof and spotted a, a bit of pink hidden in the wreckage. The Griffin Chaser too. I had wondered what had become of it after we left Old Olne. The goddess grows impatient. Yeah, yeah, I'm on my way, I thought. I've got what you're asking for, just hold your alicorns. There was only one set of instructions left in my notes. Keep your eyes forward, sparkle up. Stall, and wait for the signal. 
This time, the goddess's alicorns had not led me to the observation room, but right into the heart of the goddess herself. I levitated myself above the dusty lake of MIP, and stared up between the vats at the floating face of the goddess. Lights on my EFS compass indicated that two green alicorns flanked me, and then a vague, untargeted haze that seemed to fill the rest of the room. The haze was brightest when I swelled my head towards the vat of the Trixie I'd fallen into so many decades ago. I found myself dreading this, even as I spoke with her, telling the goddess what I had found. I knew that I was just delaying the inevitable. The black book was in my saddlebags, cold against my flank, and I had brought it here, on purpose. And I was about to let it fall into the hooves of the absolutely worst pony who could ever gain it, on purpose. There was no amount of heroic acts or live save that would make up for all this evil. Weather control, that is all. The goddess expected more from Red Eye. What manner of threat is that? You're the one that assumed what he was after in the Ministry of Awesome was a threat to you. I reminded the Trixie thing, speaking aloud, because just thinking that the floating light show pony head was just getting a little too creepy. Then clearly the single Pegasus or single pony project is a threat, <clears throat> and just a very cleverly one of that will take the goddess a moment to comprehend. But just a moment. Ah, yes. I stared, trying not to let my disbelief project too strongly. <clears throat> or maybe it was not this single Pegasus project that he was after. Tell me everything you saw in the Ministry of Awesome. Well, stalling wasn't going to be hard. Stall? Why do you stall? Foolish little pony, there is nothing you can do that is of concern or consequence to the mighty goddess. Standing there, staring at the amorphous nothingness before me, I began to suspect she was right. <clears throat> How the hell was I supposed to stop the goddess? Shoot her? A lot? Unless I picked up bullets of goddess killing, that just wasn't going to do a damn thing. And she had every spell of the alicorns, probably every spell, Trixie, Twilight Sparkle, Mosaic, and Gestalt, if not every unicorn she had consumed. She would think me dead. This was hopeless. Yes, your silly little plan against the goddess is hopeless. The goddess is not impressed. You... wait, who? What? Who? What, are you an owl now? I suddenly thought of Wordsworth. You thought of names. Think the names again. Oh? Oops. There was no way I could have foreseen the Star Orb when making this plan. Did I just trip on something? Stall. Well, here goes nothing. I thought of the orbs, remembering them as best I could. Every detail. Focusing most heavily on the Star Orb. I swept what felt like hours of replaying Canterlot in my head. Even when I sensed the approach of the others, more alicorns, I assumed, I did not stop. I went over each memory orb multiple times, but kept coming back to the star orb. Whenever I did, the goddess grew quiet in my mind. I think the memory stunned her. Finally, she demanded I stop. Enough of that memory! It... it is not important! I suspected deeply that it was the most important memory ever. But, I didn't have time to investigate my suspicions. The location identifier started flashing in my EFS, EFS, but it wasn't telling me where I was. How could it? I'd been in the same place for hours. In fact, it wasn't telling me anything, just flashing, getting my attention. This must be the signal. But, what do I do now? Then, it told me. Run. Zenith has planted the Balefire Bomb beneath Meriponi. Your friends are safely away. You have 38 minutes to get clear. Run. Wait. What? 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 
The Balefire Bomb is here. How did he get here? How did Zenith get past all the Hellhounds? I knew she was sneaky, but that was beyond the pale. How could I have asked her to take that risk? And that was supposed to get out of here? Or out of the range on that damned pedal machine? That's insane. What was I doing standing there? Why the hell would I have gone into this place? Why would I have... Even as I panicked, the pieces of my plan fell into place. Of course. I needed to be unnaturally persuasive. What could have been more difficult, more worthy of resorting to party time mentals, than talking Red Eye into giving me the bomb? No wonder he started pulling out after that. He was taking the bomb to the camp. Ten Pointing Tower hadn't been under Mega Spell threat for over a week. I'd made homage safe before I'd even left. But we still what we need is still here, Zenith had said. I remembered how small the Bellfire Bomb looked in Pinky Bell's barn. Small enough a little filly could move it around, if with difficulty. I remember going to speak with God, but I'd cut out the memory of what had happened in Shattered Hoof. Blackwing, I remember saying. I was hoping to see you. I have something I need to ask you for. I was hoping you would come with me, or we could come to an agreement. I remember all the things, all the times I had lost track of Zenith in battle, how she'd managed to follow me without the Twilight Society catching her. Zenith had Blackwing's zebra stealth cloak, and zebra stealth cloaks even mute sense. You have 37 minutes to get clear, but why would I have... Don't watch any of these until you slash I get the black book and take it to Mariponi. I'd written that to myself, then told Calamity to allow me to view those two orbs we had picked up from the merchant just before I went to Shattered Hoof. The argument between Applejack and Rarity flashed through my head. You said you were going to get rid of that cursed thing. I said I would burn it, and I tried. But as you can see, it doesn't burn. I even tried to have Spike burn it, and all I did was send it to Princess Celestia. Well, you should have gotten rid of it. How? I doubt anything short of a mega spell could destroy it, and I certainly don't want to dispose of the book where it could find its way into the wrong hooves. I didn't bring the black book here to give to the goddess. I brought it here to destroy it, once and for all. Crush two eggs under one hoof. My little pony in my mind was prancing nervously, trying to shout down my thoughts with the screams of BOMB! BOMB! GET AWAY FROM THE BOMB! THE ZEBRA! Crap. I floated the black book out of my saddlebags and tossed it into the taint. It splashed, then bobbed, the twisted and profane black leather floating in the debris. No! Think of all the great things you could do! I backpedaled. My brain finally working. I needed to get out of here. Now. You could save Twilight Sparkle. My eyes were still locked on the book, but the little pony in my head was screaming. There was no time for that anymore. Thump. I backed into some pony. My panic skyrocketed, my heart skipping a beat, and my levitation field imploded, dropping me into the mucky lake of taint. I spun around to see who was blocking my exit. Three ponies, in enclave armor, still blocking the doorway. In front of them, a stately dust-covered pegasus drew, flew forward, dressed in sophisticated gray barding, with a sleek military elegance. Greetings, goddess, the pegasus called out, staring up at Trixie's light show, seeming unfazed. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Harbringer. And I am here on behalf of the Enclave. <clears throat> it's an Enclave experiment, all right, Clemity has said about the science project we'd found in Old Olne, under orders of Harbringer, one of the Enclave High Council. The goddess had more important things on her mind. Children, flee! As did I. I desperately searched for a way around them. I could try floating them, but they had wings. I wouldn't be able to hold them in place just by lifting their hooves off the ground. I could try to fight my way through, 
but they were enclave. And it didn't... And uh, it could be like trying to fight three or four calamities. And I would so thoroughly lose. Even if I won, my injuries would assure I didn't get out in time. You have 36 minutes to get clear. There's no need to flee, Harbring assured the goddess calmly. We mean you no harm. In fact, we have come to offer you an alliance between the Enclave and the goddess. I froze, my jaw dropping. Wait, what? For the briefest moment, I forgot about the bomb and turned to stare at the Pegasus. The goddess was ultimately genocidal. Her plans for Equestria meant all ponies ended, and worse, the end of all individuality. She was a horror, and the Enclave wanted to ally with her? Fly, my children! Save yourselves! Okay, and part of me was a little impressed with the goddess. Trixie knew she was about to die, and her final act was to save the Olicorns. Damn. We have recently become aware that the pony named Dreadeye is doing, Harbinger stated. We know he opposes you, and his plans to overthrow you. His intentions with the towers pose a clear and imminent threat to the Enclave and its citizens. His intentions are nothing short of an act of war. Oh, this was not happening. I pressed anxiously in the taint, looking around for an alternate escape route. Oh, goddesses. Even if I found one, there wouldn't be enough time for me to get away. But the Enclave military is... Harbinger permitted himself a chuckle. Let us say, formidable. Should we combine our efforts, I have no doubt we can deal with Red Eye, eliminate the threat he poses in its entirety. Swiftly. You have 35 minutes to get clear. Oh no. No, 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 no. This is bad. Need to find a way out now. And with the threat of Red Eye and his plots wiped away, Harbinger concluded, smiling the earnest grin of a politician. You can rule all of Equestria below unchallenged. We will remain above, unthreatened. And we will know all peace in our time. The observation room. It was designed to protect against a megaspell detonation. It has saved Twilight Sparkle before. Of course, it had also trapped her inside. But I'd worry about that later. Breaking into full gallop, I telekinetically launched myself into one of the remaining catwalks and began to run for the observation room. What is she doing? Ambrosa, after her! One of the black carapace pegasi took to the air, giving chase. My heart was pounding in my chest. The knot itch was creeping through the insides of my legs, spreading out. You have 34 minutes to get clear. I dashed into the observation room, looking around frantically. Last time, this place sealed up in reaction to the Balefire Bomb's explosion, but this time, it would go off right under Maripony. In the time it took the shutters to close, I'd be dead from the heat alone. But I knew Twilight Sparkle wouldn't create a safe room with such a fatal flaw. There had to be some way of manually telling the room to seal. You have 33 minutes to get clear. Hold! Ambrosa ordered as she landed outside, folding her wings and trotting through the door. I paid her no attention, searching the mounting panic. I said, hold! The armored enclave mayor demanded. As in freeze, right where you're fucking standing, or I'll turn you into a glowing pile of soup. Bomb! I shouted at her in frustration, scanning all the controls and monitors for something that might trigger the room's lockdown. What bomb? She barked. What are you talking about? And I said, freeze! I heard the magical energy weapons build into her armor begin to power up. A relief washed over me as I spotted the removal bull panel. I froze, looking towards Ambrose, smiling as my horn glowed. Behind me, the screws on each corner of the panel rotated and fell out. The panel dropped to the floor with a clunk. The sound caught the Enclave soldier's attention, and when she looked towards the panel, so did I. There was a nice, big, red button marked PUSH to initiate safe room protocol. I gave it a hard buck. What did you do? Ambrose cried out as the door closed and the armored plate came down. She spun, watching massive armored shutters lower over all the windows. 
What did you just do? You have 32 minutes to get clear. Good morning, children. This is DJ.3 coming at you over the airwaves. And guess what's riding high on my tail? That's right, the news. The bright light and roll of thunder that a lot of you reported in the vicinity of Splendid Valley over 40 hours ago, the one a lot of you said was like a mega spell going off? Turns out, it was a mega spell going off. Right in the heart of Splendid Valley. Now, I don't have a lot of details, but I can confirm that a whole mess of alicorns flood the valley less than an hour before the detonation. And I can now confirm reports that our wasteland heroine was on the Ponyville side of Splendid Valley earlier that day. Now I don't know yet if there's any connection, but if I was a betting pony, I'd say our bringer of light had her hoof in what happened there. Not really the light I was talking about, Stable Dweller. Our prayers go out to you. I hope you're okay. If you, or any pony else, has further information, please let me know right away. As for reports of odd behavior from the Alicorns in the wake of this occurrence, or claims of seeing odd black ponies flying through the skies, I can only... <laughs> Greetings, citizens of the Equestrian Wasteland. This is the Grand Pegasus Enclave. We have commandeered this broadcast to deliver an important message to all ponies. Do not be afraid. We are here to save you. Footnote. Maximum level. Quest perk added. Touched by taint. 2. Exposure to taint has altered your physiology. You do not take immediate damage from radiation. In fact, you gain extra healing while being exposed to it. However, radiation continues to build up in your system as normal.